Welcome. Today I'm going to unbox the Ender 3 V2 Neo, a great little machine that is going to replace my original Ender. This machine has a lot of upgrades from the original Ender and as well as the Ender Pro and the V2. I won't get into the details of that, but essentially it has some nice little drawers. It now has some tensioners, an all metal extruder. The Neo has a flexible plate as well as the BL Touch. The only thing I wish it did have that it does not is a filament runout sensor. But all in all, a great little machine. It's very easy to set up and just get printing. It's mostly assembled. All you really need to do is attach the top of the frame and plug in some of the motors and you're good to go. It has the SD card, some extra filament and your tools that you may need and your tiny replacement parts, the screws that are used to hold the frame together and then of course your nozzle tools and the screwdriver that I've never used for anything but you have one and the cutters. It also has a handy little knob that you can put on your extruder if you want. So the two screws go in the underside of the frame up into the top bars and that's easier to do if you just slide it to the edge of a table rather than trying to turn the whole thing upside down. The manual that comes with it is really good. I simply just followed the instructions step by step and within a few minutes was able to get some prints going. Once the frame is attached and tight, you just have to plug in the motors and all of the cables are labeled so that you can plug them into the correct locations. The display panel, which is also a newer style display, just kind of slides on and off. So you can attach the mount to the rail, slide it back and forth wherever you want it to sit, tighten it, and then just put your display on it. The knob fits a little looser than I would like, but that's okay. Make sure that the power setting is set correctly before you turn it on. I like to move my nozzle all the way over and then secure the wiring so it doesn't get in the way. I also like to double check the wheels on the rails to make sure that they have a little bit of a firm grip. They shouldn't slide freely without touching the rails. If they do, like it did on the bed that was a little too loose, there's a little eccentric nut that you can use to tighten to make the wheels go closer or farther away to grab onto that. You want it to grab on but not be super tight. And then I also use some grease on the lead screw just to make sure that it runs smoothly. It doesn't take very much and then of course just wipe off any excess. There's some on there from the factory, at least there should be, but just in case I like to put some on there. And then I'm gonna plug in the power and go through the setup, put in the SD card, it may have had the updated firmware files on it, I don't remember, but if it doesn't, you can just download the firmware, put it on the SD card, and update the firmware, or download any of the programs or the manual from the manufacturer website. Then all you have to do is set up your auto leveling and make sure that you get your Z offset set correctly, and make sure that you also have the probing, the G29, in your g-code of your print set so that it does the pattern and gets the bed level before it starts its print the first test print i did i forgot to do that but part of that is also getting a really good first layer after you have your z offset set make sure that you go in during a print and change your baby steps up or down till you get a really good first layer I personally don't like the coating that they have on their flex plate. It works a little bit too well and prints are difficult to get off and can sometimes leave filament stuck on the plate. But that's just a personal preference. But I tell you what, I really appreciate those that stick with me because the support is very much appreciated. If you would also like to support this channel, make sure to check out the links in the description. 
All in all, this is a great machine. It's still a personal favorite of mine. The only thing that would make it even better is if it came with a filament runout sensor as well. They put them on the larger machines, but for some reason they don't put them on the small ones and that would just be great. And for me, just because of my preference and dislike of this flexible plate, I got a PEI sheet that works, for me at least, significantly better. So if you're new to 3D printing and looking for a quick, easy printer to get started with, or a seasoned 3D printing veteran, this would be a good machine all around. The print quality out of the box is great. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you liked it, make sure to click that thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe for future videos. Until then, go ahead and get a new printer going.